What's good people, welcome back to the video. Today we're writing to Little Uzi Vert versus The World, the next project man. We're sort of climbing up through his discography. You guys seem to really enjoy the first uh, Lover's Rage that we checked out, I think about a week ago now. I was looking forward to this one. This one's been recommended quite a couple of times. I've gone through the track list. I've heard two tracks off here, uh, which I think this is around the time that I sort of discovered who Uzi was. And it's Money Longer and P's and Q's. I was absolutely in love with Money Longer, to be honest. I think that was the first track that sort of enticed me to Uzi. And then I never really went much further than that. But I know this was in my playlist. It still is in my playlist, of course. But as in, I played the shit out of this song. And uh, P's and Q's as well as a banger. So I have heard those two. We're going to do the usual shit. We're going to check them out anyway. Just vibe out. Because it's been a minute since I've heard either of those tracks, to be honest. Like, probably a good couple years. So it's still going to be sort of refreshing to hear it on sort of newer, more older ears, if you get me. But overall, I'm looking forward to this, man. Nine tracks, short and sweet. Before we jump into it, guys, if you're new around here, please just drop a sub. We're on the road to 4K. I'm trying to hit that as soon as possible. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, description below. And of course, drop a like and a comment on the video as well. I really appreciate it. But without further ado, let's just jump straight into this, man. Canadian Goose, track one. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I woke up in the morning, brush my teeth, smack my bitch ass. Damn. All I do is think about the cash. What? Yeah. What? Getting all this cash. Yeah. Yeah. What? I'm 200 on the dash. Ooh. Yeah. Long Uzi. Ooh. I got hella groups. What? Smoking backwoods. I don't fuck with you. Got a little maraca. Yeah. Cuff the double plus. Cause I'm rocking soup. Smoke the boy like he is a Lucy. Hey. Yeah. On the Z. Hear a noise. I load it up. I load it up. All these diamonds. Ain't nobody close to us. Literally, I'm cold as fuck, cold as what? Okay, so far, dope introduction, man. I'm loving how it's sounding, the different sort of sounds. Again, it's just following suit with that sort of futuristic type sound. Love those little maracas that came in as well, bro. Something a bit different. Uh, I'm just liking how he's sort of, how he's approaching it with his vocals. He's sort of like talking to himself, he's saying something and then sort of replying to himself in a sort of weird fluctuation of his voice, which I'm finding really interesting. Just, just enjoying it, man. Sounds like he's having fun. Hell of a lot of ad-libs as well, for this classic sort of Uzi... Uzi ad libs and Uzi sounds that he's made. It's quite erratic almost the sounds like production wise, I mean. I just got me a Mewtwo. Yeah, I just got me a Mewtwo. Yeah, I need to get on my clear. Yeah, damn it's so cold, some soup. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, I'm gonna keep so I barely get on top. I love how it's cutting out and then coming back in constantly. Yeah, you're a lame, that's a shame. Okay guys, that was track one, Canadian Goose. Enjoyed that, man. Solid little introduction, to be honest. I'm not going to say it was anything too crazy, but I, I think it's, um, it's it's sort of setting the tone for the project, I'm predicting. I enjoyed the production style of it. I, I loved, like, it was extremely erratic, and I feel like it could have gone one of two ways. I personally quite appreciated it. I'd like to know what you guys think of that track in general, and any of the tracks, actually. Let me know in the comments below. I'll have to sort of see your guys' opinion on these projects, but... Yeah, it was quite erratic. There was a lot of going in and out, almost like it was going in and out of consciousness, like the production, which I thought was quite interesting. And I enjoyed the sort of different futuristic sounding production again that we sort of come to terms with on the, in any Uzi music, at least from the last project. But overall, I enjoyed it, man. thought there was some like dope little lyrics in there as well. Like I mentioned in the previous, uh, in the previous video, I'm not necessarily listening for lyrics, but I think in that sort of lane, it's not too bad. You know, he's got some sort of lazy bars, but overall, it's just enjoyable to listen to and they're like, Partially competent, if you get what I mean. Right, track two. High roller, spelt high as in hello. Interesting, let's get it. Mm. That's hard, bro. That bass, man, it's crazy heavy. You know I'm a Guys, again, man, so breaks are hard. I am a beast. Look at my pockets, they so obese. I love that sort of fast flow he does. I'm loving how like the beat is constantly yeah. switching intensity, you know a bit like the last track. Yeah. A bit more on this yeah. one. You know I'm a just goes really bare to just yeah. those like 808s. Yeah. Then it comes back yeah. in, man. I swear that girl she a ten. Huh? Yeah. Keep her around. I swear that girl she a gem. Yeah. Woo. Before I was on. Yeah. Fun on the twins. 
<laughs> okay, high roller track two. Probably prefer that to the first one, to be honest. Again, it was following suit. It's quite an erratic sort of production that was going in and out of intensity, like I mentioned, sort of in and out of consciousness. Um, I enjoyed it though. Really fucking heavy, man. The way it was sort of coming out and then coming back in. I was enjoying what he was doing with his vocals as well. Another sort of fast flow that he was chucking in there. And I really appreciate it when he sort of sings in a way. It's hard to explain. So I wouldn't say it's quite singing, but he's just got a certain, you know, it's his voice. He has a very iconic sort of voice that just works over stuff like that, that has a slight rasp to it, even though it's quite high pitched, it's sort of hard to explain. But uh, I enjoyed that one, man. Really did enjoy it. I think the production is going to be another standout. The production was a standout on the last project, and so far, I'm just enjoying how experimental it is. Just the different sounds and stuff, that little high pitched noise that was like rising every so often. Mess with it, man. Good so far, bro, good so far. Okay, track three, Money Longer. Of course, like I mentioned, I've heard this, but I'm actually quite looking forward to hearing it again because it's been a long time and I really fought with this tune. Like, I tell you, I fought with it. I played it a lot, man. It's sort of, this is what frustrates me is that I heard this song, I really enjoyed it and I never really went any further for some reason. And I don't know why because I really do enjoy this track. Let's check it out. Dude, I played the shit out of this song, for real. It's been like 2016. Turn to a savage, pocket got fatter, she call me daddy Smoking that gas, got all that zany, she on a powder Nowadays I am on oh, my head, I got dude, sadder Such a good try Money got man. longer, speaker got louder, car got faster Turn to a savage, pocket got fatter, she call me daddy Smoking that gas, got all that zany, she on a powder Yo, she ain't like fun Yeah Chris Brown said these hoes ain't liar None of these hoes got no more Okay, track three, Money Longer. I'm going to cut that relatively short. I always do with tracks I've already heard, uh, just because I've already heard it. <laughs> but, uh, but I really enjoyed that track, man. It's great to sort of relive that. I really did enjoy that tune back in the day. I messed with it heavy. The frustration is real that I didn't delve into this project more, but I was a fucking, I don't know, I was young, bro. Young. Right, track four, Grab the Wheel. Let's jump straight into it, man. Now I'm on the road. Talking to the usher at the Grove. Mm. Yeah. When you can see how influenced he is by fashion, man. In the last project on this one, constantly talking about brands and shit. I got everything up in the store. Mm. That you cook up and I know that ain't no book. Hey. Looking at that girl, I really should. Yeah. Grab the wheel, grab the wheel, grab it like I'm tired. Hey. Nowadays I'm getting money, I don't worry. Mm. Yeah. All my enemies and my Boy, man. I love that, bro. I love the like introduction to it with that like switched up his voice. I won't speak. Yeah. Red bottoms my feet. Yeah. No more. I don't wanna play no more. I don't wanna heartbreak no more. I don't wanna wait no more. Hey, rock and show. Oh, bro, I'm loving this, man. It's a bit different to sort of the, the previous ones. It's not so hype, but I'm just loving it, bro. It's a lot more laid back. It's just a bit more of a vibe, if you know what I mean. I mentioned that introduction as well. I loved how, like, what he switched up with his voice. Felt like he was quite close, if you know what I mean. Quite close to the mic and sort of, yeah, just felt like a bit more personal. And then it just came in, man. Big fan of this one, bro. I love the production. Like I said, I just love how laid back it is. And it does feel like, relatively simple, not so erratic as some of the other ones. It's just a bit more of a vibe. Just seems a bit more relaxed overall, the way sort of approaching it. But I'm messing with it, man. It's nice to have some sort of down tracks in a project that are not so intense to sort of, you know, make it a roller coaster, if you will, instead of it all just being so one dimensional. I love how he carries out those notes, bro. Twenty-one when he made this. I don't know. I'm twenty-one. That's crazy, bro. I was broke. I was broke. 
I was just at home, just at home. Okay, grab the wheel. Bro, that, that could possibly be one of my favourites, man. I've just playlisted that. I've just put it in my sort of more chilled out playlist. I fuck with that, man. I love the vibe of it. I loved how laid back it felt, like I mentioned. He, he just seemed a bit more relaxed on it, and I really enjoyed his vocal, man. You know, I, I know that it's like a staple Uzi thing, along with multiple other artists that sort of carry out that note. I think he executes it ridiculously well compared to some other people, but I just enjoyed how laid back it felt, like I mentioned. Just, just a nice little vibe. Again, it was sort of cutting out at the right time and then bringing it back in again. Just enjoyed that one, man. Grab the wheel. Big fan. Again, said this in the last one. Tell me your top three tracks off this project. I'm really intrigued to know. I love to sort of compare and get other people's opinions because uh, it always intrigues me. So let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. Right, track five. You was right. Let's get it, man. Ooh. I was going to ask about producer credits. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. You was right, I was wrong. Yeah, I should have never ever took her home. Yeah, I already feel like this is a metro beat, bro. Gone. Yeah, fantasy on my phone. Yeah, hit it from the back, watch a nigga. Who's <laughs> killing you. me, man? Yeah, crying in my arms like a nigga wrecked you. I love it, though. I love breaks, bro. Hard, bro. Running to the it brings intensity yeah. to a not so intense Look track. Yeah, my mama chip like we rich. Yeah. Look at my bitch like we rich. I love yeah, Uzi in this sort of bag, running bro. This vibe. This and the previous track. Nigga just a vet I five niggas in clawing me. I had to back back. Try to diss me. I take it to your family. Yeah. Production's on point from Metro, man. Vanish. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. You was right, I was wrong. Yeah, hit it from the back, watch a nigga bless you. It's killing me every time, bro. My arms like a nigga wrecked you. Talking about a broken heart, running to the restroom. Okay, track five, you was right. I enjoyed that, man. Again, just. Just a little vibe, bro. I didn't really say too much. I was just completely just like zoned out with that one, to be honest. Metro did such a good job with the production. It was relatively simple. And I think you, I wouldn't call you incorrect for saying that it was slightly repetitive, but I was sort of okay with that because I was enjoying the vibe and sometimes repetitiveness is cool if it's done right. And I think there were certain little nuances amongst it that, that made it not so repetitive. I love those little breaks, man. It's been an ongoing theme throughout, but they really are killing me, especially that one, it just stops. And then you just hear as he says something and then it just brings it back in. I think Metro did a really good job of playing around with a relatively simplistic beat. And I was a big fan of it, man. And I just, I love how Uzi, I love Uzi in that bag, man. It's just a bit more laid back. I just, I fuck with it, bro. Heavy, man. Right, track six, Baby, Are You Home? <laughs> Okay. I'm wondering whether they're gonna bring the intensity back up from the last two tracks. That was just like a little little breather almost. Metro's back again. Yeah, she called my phone. Ask me where I'm on. Baby, is your home? I'm in the area. Like, tell me where you're on. Baby, are you on? Yeah, baby, are you on? Like, counting on my door. With my eyes closed. I don't trust the whole, but I trust my own. Definitely a lot darker than some of the previous ones. Okay. I've mentioned in previous reactions, I love it when they outro a song like this and it feels like the wheels are falling off. The machine is malfunctioning almost. Right, baby, are you home? Uh, I enjoyed that. I'd probably say uh, possibly my least favourite. It just didn't resonate with me as much as some of the other tracks, honestly. I thought the production was really cool. I think what they were going for was executed well. It was definitely a lot darker, a lot more eerie and slightly moody than some of the other tracks. I'd say as the song progressed, uh, I'd say I probably enjoyed the second half of the track a bit more. I just feel like maybe a bit more could have been done, or maybe, maybe not. Again, that's just why I love to know what you guys think of these tracks, because just for me personally, just didn't resonate with me as much as some of the other tracks, but that's more of an opinion thing, more of a personal thing. All of this shit is personal at the end of the day. I find it weird that people get mad when a reactor doesn't like certain tracks. It's all down to opinion, man. Everyone has different tastes in, uh, in music and what they like to hear. But fuck it, man. But still, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good track. Just not one of my favourites, honestly. 
Right, track seven, P's and Q's. Also, I've heard this one. This goes hard, man. If I remember correctly, pretty sure it has like a mad sample or instrument of some sort. Something crazy, I can't remember, to be honest with you. I know I fought with this track heavy, along with Money Longer. So uh, let's get into it, man. Yeah, that's right. It's like an accordion or some shit. This goes hard, man. The beat is crazy. It's a sample fucking accordion. This goes crazy, man. Weirdly, I found out about this track way after Money Longer, even though they're on the same project. My friend put me on. Bro, I love his ad libs and what he does in the background. Stay on my peers and my cues, yeah. Stay on my cues and my peers. Hey. Feels like it happened to me, yeah. I'll bring that girl to the big league, yeah. Bro, I love this, man. I think it is an accordion. Let me know if it's not, but I'm pretty confident it is. I think it's so impressive that they're able to put an accordion in a song like this and it pop off to this extent. I'm pretty sure this was one of his one of his big girl ones because I remember hearing it everywhere. Uh, but I suppose I only really heard it in my circle. But uh, but I really did enjoy this one. Again, it's, it's highlighting, I think I can appreciate it more than before because it's really highlighting the experimentation of it. And I feel like now doing this reaction stuff and really listening to production and stuff like that, I realize how impressive it is to sort of put that in a track and it just sounds fucking hard, man. Who thought an accordion would be hard? God knows, never thought that would come out of my mouth. But overall, I'm just really enjoying it. I love how the accordion sort of cuts out and I'm loving the um, the backing vocal sort of thing where he's like, he's following himself up with a slightly more muffled version where he's just saying something wacky and stupid, which I just fuck with, man. I think it adds a bit more, just another layer, man. Just a bit more atmosphere to the track, which I'm messing with. He seems like he's the king of that so far, to be honest with you, man. I'm really fucking with this track, bro. Uh, it's how he plays around with his voice, bro. It's so impressive. Okay, guys, that was P's and Q's, man. Um, Love it. I was just mentioning just then, I just love how, how he plays around with his voice, man. There's a select few people that can do it where they can sort of put a bit more emotion into a lyric and into a vocal. Um, just by simply switching up just the way they approach it, you almost as you might go a bit faster about it and there's a bit more anger involved. But I didn't really say it was necessarily anger. I hope you guys sort of know what I mean, but he just sort of fluctuates his voice slightly. Uh, I suppose it's just down to cadence, isn't it? But um, yeah, I just think he's really diaper that. Like Thug is another one that's really diaper doing that. Thug's on sort of a whole other level in a sense of just sounds like there's three different people on the track but still man really like that track big fan happy i got to listen to this and money longer again bro because they're solid tracks man definitely solid i think i'm appreciating the more seeing the bigger picture of this whole project because so far i've really enjoyed this man to be honest with you like so far there hasn't really been that many skips uh but yeah fucking with it man fucking with it two tracks left far too short to be honest always i'm like yeah short and sweet by the end of it i'm like fuck i wish this was like another fucking nine tracks longer right track eight team rocket this is one's been highly recommended by a few people um when i asked sort of people's favorite track off this album team rocket was was pretty up there man pretty sure team rocket is a pokemon reference as well always happy for a pokemon reference uh let's jump into it man okay Come to hunt the chest, money my way. Yeah, driving to the bank, yeah. I can't close my safe, yeah. Hey. Money in the way, See how contrasting it is, the main vocal to that ad lib. Locally, leveled up from the last project. Diamonds on my teeth, don't talk my way. What do you want with me? She all in my face. Yeah, I know. Girl, you too late. Yeah, you ain't got no taste. Yeah, driving to the bank. Yeah, I can't close my safe. He's just impressing me so much vocally, man. I know I mentioned before those continuous notes, but the way he is to sort of. You know what I mean? I don't know what that was. That was supposed to be some sort of wave. But it's the way, like, it's the runs he's sort of doing in a weird way. Because he's not. 
Obviously, he's not like he's not like a proper vocalist. Obviously, so I think Ron maybe is the wrong word, but it's just the way he's sort of playing around with the vocal. I'm really appreciating and just altering his tone as he's going through. I'm really liking, and I think his vocal is a lot more prominent because the production isn't so erratic and it's not so hard. It's relatively sort of simplistic and low, and it's able to sort of give him the chance to sort of shine vocally over this. And I think it's really impressive. He's just riding over it really well. I think the production's sort of sort of pairing up with this vocal perfectly, in my opinion. I'm really enjoying this one. Money and I love that sort of like quite creepy offbeat sort of piano. Hey. Mm. Okay guys, that was track eight, Team Rocket. I enjoyed that one, man. I can understand what you guys sort of, why, sorry, why you guys appreciate that one. Uh, definitely different to some of the other ones. Obviously not so heavy. Production was quite interesting. It did feel quite sort of raw and bare almost. I was loving that piano that was sort of coming in and out. That did sound quite, quite sort of eerie and creepy and that someone was sort of hitting it in not so much coordination, if you know what I mean, but it worked. It worked really well and vocally just really impressed me on that. Just, yeah, just the way he was switching up the tone throughout, just, just riding over the production really well. But the production was sort of switching up constantly, which I found quite interesting too, which has been sort of, again, quite an ongoing topic throughout. But I enjoyed that one, man. I wouldn't say it was one of my favourite ones, honestly, but I did fuck with it. Okay, last track, Scott and Ramona. Track nine, man. Damn, I wish this project was a bit longer, but let's jump into it, man. Hopefully he goes out with a bang. Okay. Just adding that instantly makes it something more, which is crazy. Whoa. That is hard. Okay, it's definitely going out with a bang. My lord, man. Jeez, that production at the beginning, it was weird. There was like, probably there were three different layers, like lanes going through. And it was and it was sort of deciding in my brain which one was gonna to come to the forefront. And and it just it's just just all mulched into mulched. It's just all just molded into like one just really heavy, moody, just hard beat, man. Jeez, bro. I always say like, oh, I really enjoy this side of so-and-so, of, so of Uzi, but I'm just enjoying all these different lanes he's going down. A lot of you said he's extremely experimental, and I'm recognising that from the last project and from this one, that he does just sort of, I don't know, just likes to venture down a bunch of different avenues, but I'm really enjoying this, man. This is hard, bro. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Reverb on his voice, man. Drum pattern, man. Dude, what a fucking roller coaster. Okay, guys, Lil Uzi Vert versus the world, man. Thank you to everyone, Thomas. Check this out. I'm really sort of gassed to keep going up through his discography, bro. Uh, I would say I probably prefer this to Love Is Rage. Honestly, just really solid, man. Really solid. Hardly any misses. I thoroughly enjoyed that, to be honest. That last track's got on Ramona. Just a brief little word on that. Just hard as fuck, man. Loved it. Loved how dark and eerie it was, but just so hard. So, so hard, bro. Overall, I think the main standout on here, really, was two things. as the production. Just the way how experimental it is and the different avenues he was going down, like I mentioned, in so many different sounds. And then him vocally, I think, 
has leveled up since Love is Rage, in my opinion. I don't know the gap between these two projects. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I had a look. It's like a year apart. Uh, yeah, don't know whether he just on this chart started to go a bit more vocal heavy, but I just really enjoyed what he was doing with his voice. He just sounded a bit better, in my opinion. Just his tonality sort of stood out to me on this. Like just the switching up of his voice. There's different ad-libs as well. It was really ad-lib heavy, but not in a not in a negative way. I think they worked really well. There was times he was having a conversation with himself or like replying to himself almost. And then just following up with other things. But I think having that range in your voice to be able to make these certain high-pitched sounds and then still have this really low, sort of dark, moody sort of tone that you can carry yourself through. I think they contrast really well and it adds sort of another layer, like I mentioned. Overall, Overall, just the versatility stands out to me massively and I really enjoyed this project man. There wasn't really that many misses, I could probably listen to that all the way through and be happy to listen to every single track again all the way through, 100%. It was great to revisit Money Nonga and P's and Q's, just big fan man, really big fan, not gonna lie. Metro on those two tracks as well, he really showed out, I'd say more on the first one than the second one honestly for me personally, but, um, but overall man. Just a really solid project. I'm really gassed to go up. I think the next one is Love Tape, if I'm not mistaken. The perfect Love Tape, yeah. Uh, a few people told me to check that out as well. That'll be coming soon. Uh, luckily, these projects are a bit shorter, so it means that I don't need as much time to get them out. Because with the sort of like, when you're doing 14 to 18 track projects, you need to set the time aside to really take it apart and really, um, really sort of embrace it properly. And with these, they're a bit shorter, so it's a bit easier for me to get them out. So if you ever see these coming out a bit more regularly than another artist on my channel, simply because at least this one and Love Tape are both really short, so it's a lot easier for me to do. So, um, so yeah, win-win all round, although I would like them to be a bit longer though, honestly. I felt like I could have kept listening for quite a bit after that, to be fair. But overall, man, fantastic project. Really good. Probably favourite Uzi project so far. Plenty heard too, but <laughs> we'll see where we go after this, man. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, drop a like. If you enjoy my action, if you point you want to see me again, then please drop a sub. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, description below. If you have any requests for any Little Uzi Vert or anyone else, chuck it in the comments below. But for the meantime, guys, I've been Charlie. This has been Little Uzi Vert versus the world, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>